Today, we are going to talk about one of the most important lessons that every single artist should remember. It doesn't matter if you're a beginner or advanced artist, because you will find that it doesn't matter how good and skillful you are, we always have those worries in us. Like a lot of artists, when they just beginning their way, think that, oh, all of these people are so talented and skillful and I am so not there. All of those insecurities live in every single one of us. And what beginners often don't realize is that advanced artists feel the same way. Most of us feel that way at least some time. And even most confident artists sometimes question themselves and their abilities. Because art is subjective. And there's really no way of knowing if you're doing the right thing or not. But the key here is to remember that you can't fail in art. And this is something I want you to write down somewhere. Better yet, write down it in your sketchbook and somewhere on a paper and put it on a wall so that you can read it often. Because you can't fail in art. Because again, Art is subjective and there is no way to measure how good you are, how successful you are. Because what we determine as success right now is basically how much other people admire your work or how popular you are on social media. And yes, we will talk about social media and followers and all of those things in the future. But you need to remember the main thing. Art is your very unique way of expressing your unique personality. This is the only way for you to tell the world who you are in the most natural, unforceful way. And just because maybe not many people can relate to your art doesn't mean that it's bad. And just because maybe your skill levels are not there yet and you would like to be better doesn't mean that you're bad as well. You can't fail in art. You can fail in math, you can fail in science. There is a lot of ways in this world where you can fail, but art is not one of them. Because the only way you can fail in art is if you give up. That is the only ultimate failure. And the fear that every single one of us has especially artists, we're very insecure and it doesn't matter how good we are. We're perfectionists. We always want to be better. We always strive to try new things and be better and be better than other artists because we do want to be successful just like any other person. But with art, just by creating, you are already successful just by letting yourself express yourself and sharing it with the world is very brave. You should not be afraid to share your art with the world. And we will talk about this much more in the future. But remember that you sharing something this personal with the world is a gift and takes a lot of courage because it is very personal. Every single piece of artwork sculpting, dance, music, or drawing, every single one that we create is personal to us because it's a piece of us. It is part of our soul. And how can you fail in just being yourself, right? (laughs) You are beautiful and wonderful and unique. Every single one of us is. And it doesn't matter how well you can draw a still life or how well your anatomy is because those are very technical things and they don't actually make you an artist. Those are just skills. What makes you an artist is your uniqueness. What makes you an artist is the way you express yourself and you can't fail in those things. Just remember that because I can't tell you how many times I've met artists with different levels of skills, different place in life, different jobs. Some of them were professional artists. Some of them were working in an industry that is art related. Some of them were beginners or medium. But it doesn't matter. All of them had same fears. 
all of them had same insecurities. All of them were asking me same questions, no matter the level. And the thing is, I've been there myself a lot too. And from time to time, I do question my own abilities. I do question, is my art not good? Or like, uh, am I not skillful enough? Is my anatomy off? But those things don't matter. And you need to remember this now. Because if you do decide that, oh no, I'm bad, I failed and you stop progressing, if you stop yourself from going further, that's when you fail. You fail when you give up. And that's so important to remember that. As long as you create, you get better. It doesn't matter if you're not where you want to be. It is just part of your process and part of your journey. So I can't stress this enough. You can't fail in art. Remember this once and for all. And whenever you have a moment where you question yourself or you're fearing that you're not good enough or you're stuck and you don't know what to do, just remind yourself that this is all about you. You are a beautiful, unique person with your very unique inner world. And you can share this inner world with the rest of us through your art. And by doing so, we grow. Our skills get better eventually. And if there is a goal that you strive for, you will get there for as long as you keep going. If you wish your anatomy was more realistic or you have a certain style you would like to be more like, all of those things can be developed just like any other skill. What can't be developed or skilled is your uniqueness. That's something you have inside of you. And that's the most important thing that you possess. And for as long as you keep reminding yourself about that, you keep going, you keep trying, you will get better. And at some point you will finally be happy with what you do. Or I hope that you already are. Because as long as you're doing it, you are amazing. And it doesn't matter what's your artwork like compared to other artists. Because in reality, it is subjective. In reality, there is only your artwork for you. And if you want to get better at something, you will. Just give yourself some time. Don't criticize yourself. Don't pressure yourself. And just keep going and you will get there. And that leads me to the next subject of today's class. The more, the better. So do you remember how we talked about perfectionism in previous videos? And you remember we talked about how it is important to just keep going? So that is exactly what this is about. The more you create, the better you will get. I have to once again remind you not to be a perfectionist and be a productive artist. You see how important that is? I actually had to put this in two lectures in this course just to keep reminding you of that. So the main concept here is that you want to be as productive as possible. The more you create, the better. And it doesn't really matter the quality of the work that you create. Because the more you create, the better your skill will be and eventually the quality will grow as well. So if throughout this journey you found yourself stuck on multiple artworks or you found yourself spending many, many hours on one little artwork and keep redoing it and redoing it, I want you to stop. What I want you to do is from now on, if you do have this problem, Every time you start an artwork, set a timer on your phone and give yourself an hour. Start working and as soon as an hour is up, that's fine. We are moving on to the next thing. And you will be surprised how much it will help you with your process. (laughs) I've watched so many of my students at first being really afraid of this exercise, but then they got so good that they started creating masterpieces in just hours. So... Trust me on this. I'm gonna tell you a little secret that you might have heard about 
but every single artist again doesn't matter your level your skill your experience every single artist at some point struggles from procrastination so basically we feel like oh yeah i wish i can create something but we don't know what we don't feel like it we would rather do a hundred and million things rather uh, we would rather do a hundred and million things other than that that's called procrastination and in the end we are not productive and i have to admit i do struggle with procrastination myself sometimes and I am trying to fight it just like every other artist <laughs> and it is very common for us to do that and one of the things I found very very helpful to put yourself in a very different mindset and change your mood is changing the scenery and in this exercise we will actually be combining all three parts of this lecture in one exercise so that should be quite fun So, we've talked about not being afraid to fail, because there is no failure, right? So we don't want to be perfectionists, we want to be productive, remember that. And we've talked about doing more, the more the better, and changing the scenery. So how do we combine those together? Well, I want you to grab your sketchbook, take a pen, take whatever media you like to take with you just remember it needs to be a travel size i actually make myself a travel size uh, watercolor ink kit <laughs> here's a little demonstration and again you don't have to do this at all for this exercise i'm just kind of sharing my process with you guys uh, and this is like a unique behind the scenes kind of thingy um, I actually make my very own uh, watercolor palette because most of watercolor palettes are either too big or they don't have the colors that I like to use in them so what I do is I take the colors that I love to use the most and I make my very own palette so for example this is a little box that I got from candies and I just bought this little um, I don't remember the English name of them. I think they're called pods, those little squares for the paint. They were like 30 cents each, maybe 20 cents. And I basically just uh, buy the colors that I like the most separately because usually they don't come in a standard watercolor palette. So I just buy the colors that I like to use the most separately and I squeeze them out in this little set. So this way I don't waste any watercolors and I can also take them with me. It's very useful and portable. I also have this little portable bag where I put my uh, brushes. I also put some of my markers and some of my inks. Also here is a little watercolor set I got a long time ago too. So this one is a mini one and I almost used it up. But this one has a different palette, so sometimes when I feel differently, I can use different colors. Uh, so I keep all of those things with me. And I also carry a small tiny jar I got from some jam, I think. <laughs> this is very useful and portable, because that way I can come and go to a cafe, just go to bathroom, add some water, sit and enjoy myself in a public space in a cafe and just draw so like i said changing scenery can be very useful for you as an artist for the purpose of this exercise you don't have to have a entire travel watercolor kit like i do this is just in case if you do like watercolor media feel free to use pencils or pens you should definitely take a pen or pencil with you for this exercise uh, and the rest of media is optional. So, 
take your sketchbook, take your media, and go to a public place, a cafe. You can go to multiple places too. Just sit down, make yourself comfortable, and start sketching. So that's a fun part of today's exercise. We are going to do some urban sketching and just general sketching. So let's start in a cafe. I personally very much enjoy cafe setting. It is usually very comfortable, calming, people around just minding their business, and sometimes they're even interested in what you're doing. But it doesn't matter. This is all about you. So, you know, plug in your headphones, listen to your favorite music, and let's get drawing. Here's a twist though. In this time, you cannot use any references from your phone or your imagination. The only things that you can draw for the purpose of this exercise are things and people around you. So this is also known as sketch journaling or sketchbook journaling. You can check out some beautiful artworks on Instagram where there are urban sketchers and sketchbook artists that just do the sketchbook journaling where they sketch everything around them and kind of journal. So basically they talk about their day, what did they eat, who did they meet and draw them at the moment. A lot of them actually um, draw food right before they eat it. <laughs> so this is kind of like, you know, how people take pictures for their Instagram before they eat their food. Now imagine drawing your food before you eat it. How annoying would that be for your date, huh? <laughs> but it is beautiful to see. Uh, you should really check it out. I can even include some uh, links to those kind of artists before, just so that you can see example of what can it be. Because who knows, maybe you will enjoy it so much, you can be a next urban sketcher. So, okay, we're starting in a cafe, right? Let's draw somebody you see. Uh, start from somebody who doesn't move too much, maybe somebody sitting on the next table. Let's draw him or her. The fun part here, again, about perfectionism, right? You don't really have much time, so try to draw as fast as you can. It doesn't need to be perfect and details don't matter as well. It's all about the feeling. What is so special about this person? What dragged your attention? And you don't have much time, really. You have like 10 minutes max. I would even suggest to set a timer on five. Then after you're done, you don't even have to finish the whole body or anything. You can stop whenever and move on to the next thing. Draw some objects, draw some furniture in that cafe, draw some decorations, any details you see that kind of captured your attention. Even draw your food if you like. Try it, it can be really fun. Let me know if you got any weird looks. <laughs> so next thing, we are going out. So there are a lot of landscape drawing and landscape painting that have been out there for generations, but we are gonna do urban sketching. So when you go out, pick maybe a building or bus stop or something outside that captured your attention for whatever reason and draw that. However you see it, whatever drags your attention. And again, you don't have more than 10 minutes. so. Get drawing. <laughs> That's about it. This will be your homework. So the more you do it, the better. The more places you can go visit, the better. Document your day like that. Now, uh, because right now we are going through a challenging lockdown times. At the moment, while I'm making this video, a lot of people are quarantined and they're actually not able to leave their home and, and go to a cozy cafe. So. If that's the case, or maybe you're watching this in the future and we don't have that kind of problem anymore, but you just cannot leave the house for whatever reason, that's fine too. There are other ways that I'm gonna tell you about to do that. 
So first, we're gonna change the scenery, meaning change the room. So maybe you can't leave your home, but you can definitely move around your home. So say if normally you sit and draw in your room, go to a kitchen, or go to your sibling bedroom, or go to a toilet, or an office, or whatever, wherever you can go, go there. If you have a balcony that you can go out to, go there. And uh, for the purpose of this exercise, you want to draw in at least two to three rooms so that you have more art and more different experiences with spaces. And the last one would be draw from a window. So just look out your window and see what attracts you outside and try to just draw it from a window or a balcony. Try those things and you will find that changing the scenery really helps you keep going. It really helps an artist to be more productive and, and it also challenges us and makes us try new things, which is very, very helpful for you to improve on your journey. So this will be your homework. You're gonna have to go either, you're gonna have to either go out to a cafe in public place and draw out there or if you're not able to leave your house go to at least three rooms spend at least 10 minutes there because you need 10 minutes for at least one drawing and you need to make at least one drawing per scenery got it all right guys thank you for watching i hope you keep in mind that you can't fail in art I hope you believe in yourself and you have the courage to try new things, get outside of the box and keep going. Because every time you try something, every time you learn, every time you get outside of your comfort zone and push through, you get better, you get more skillful and you get so much more developed as an artist. And I'm so proud of you for going all of this way already. We're about halfway in our journey now. And this journey is just the beginning. So let's go through this together. Stay safe, keep going, and good luck. See you next week.